Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash all about Android. That's L Y N D A dot com slash all about Android. And by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. And by SmartThings, the easiest and most affordable way to create a smart home. Protect and control your home from anywhere with no contracts or monthly fees. For 10% off any home security kit, visit smartthings.com slash twit and use the code TWIT10 at checkout. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 170, recorded on Tuesday, July 15th. 2014. We are a weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. Hello, Ron. It's good to have you back. It's good to be back. Not only is it good to have you back so that you're in that seat, yeah. but also we, we were worried. I was we worried. Were, we were concerned about, about <laughs> was, your, your well-being. It was a little bit of an intense couple of weeks. I ain't going to yeah. lie. I can't tell you. When I got the email saying I'm back and I'm going to be on the show, it, was, it made the day that much brighter. Yeah. So, yeah no, yeah. believe me. I wanted to get back to this, back into the swing of things. Oh, the eye patch remember. from two weeks ago, that was no joke. Uh, stuff yeah. went down. <laughs> And let's just say I'm okay now. I'm going to be wearing glasses for a while. But this eye didn't fare so hot. And the other eye actually at one point was started uh, going south as well. So it was oh like kind of a little bit of a crazy time. Well, it's not like you were in a role where your vision is needed. Oh, you know, no. Yeah, you know. you don't need to, you know, we don't need to read things. We don't need to be in a, in a really brightly lit studio. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even... There was a time, there was a point in the last two weeks where at nighttime, with my eyelids closed, the light from the, the nightlight across the room was wow. too bright and hurt. Wow. wow. That's, it was you know what? really it's like, crazy. It's like the guy from Styx. The, the, old, the old lead singer of Styx quit the band because he had intense light sensitivity. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, and, oh. they, and they don't know if it, he developed it over the years of like the big Mr. Roboto stage shows and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But that's why he got out of the business because he had a really bad light uh, oh, sensitivity. Oh, man, that would yeah. suck. Thank, Thank you, Brian. You. Thank you. You see, oh, I actually, see, this is perfect. Brian is so compassionate and considerate. <laughs> I mean, Brian, see, you guys know Brian's my best friend, right? I mean, Ron, like, uh, you're laying it on Brian. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> well, um, hey, we should uh, probably, oh, well, first of all, obviously, Gina's not here. Gina had to yeah. uh, take the day off, and that's okay. You know what, Gina? You do what you got to do. You enjoy yourself. Uh, you and Ron. You, you both kind of kicked butt last week, along with Father it was, Robert. It was I a fun say it was show. A show. It was a good show. We had a good time. I mean, it was a lot. I mean, I know that the joke is that when you're not here, we meet Gene and I get very, very stressed and it gets very panicked. But actually, we were we had a nice rhythm and it was pretty smooth. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, you didn't so, make it show. Yeah. Good. Well, um, well, we wanted to make you proud. We knew you were home watching. <laughs> Actually, I, I really looked forward to it. I was yeah, like, because yeah. I listened to a lot of stuff. I couldn't yeah. look at things. <laughs> so I was like, oh, good. Another episode of All About Android. I'm going to listen to that. <laughs> um, but we are super delighted to welcome back to the show Joe Braidwood, who's the chief yeah. marketing officer at uh, my favorite uh, keyboard uh, you know, Mine company too? making uh, replacement yeah. keyboards on Android, Swift Key. It's good to have you Hello. back, Joe. Good to be back. And I'm glad that we're still your favorite. That always helps. <laughs> I got to say, yeah, you, you talk about like uh, r like creating an app that's constantly in the crosshairs. It's intense, right? and it's even more intense now, right, isn't I know, it? I right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, we're trying our best. So if we can uh, if we can keep you guys uh, enjoying what we're making, then we're definitely doing something right. Yeah, hey man, I, lo I love my theme keyboard. I got there my, we go. I, I, as soon as the themes came out, I, up, I got mine. I got the nice little blue one going on. I actually just recently had someone who was on iOS, see my phone and my keyboard, and like, oh, hey, is that a custom keyboard? And I was like, oh, it's SwiftKey. And so, yeah, it was, uh, and I did the whole pitch. So, Joe, you can send me 10 bucks. 
There you so, go. Or four bucks. Or three is bucks. that how it works? <laughs> yeah, whatever well, it is now. I'll think about it. How's that? How <laughs> Can we get an affiliate program going here, <laughs> yeah, please? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to talk uh, a lot more about SwiftKey here in a little bit, but we also have a lot of other stuff to talk about today. Uh, let's see here. Samsung's commitment to Knox. We heard about Knox integration in Android, and uh, we've got some news there. New Chromecast capabilities, which are pretty sweet. Uh, definitely something that people have been waiting a long time for. A closer look at material design, just some examples of what Google has cooking on their apps and stuff. Uh, of course, like I said, Swift Key's new strategy, of which there are many points to this new strategy. We'll talk all about that and a lot more. Uh, Brian, best TD in the world. Cue up the news drop. I'll just have to set it up like that. Yeah, is that it helps. It's right. a confidence boost. I think I saw your head increase in size, at <laughs> least by a percentage point. Best TD in the business. I'm That's telling right. you. Dad who? What? <laughs> So, uh, so as as we get you know as the weeks pass after Google I/O, uh, I was curious if the interest would would wax or wane around Android L, but it appears to be growing. Interest around Android yeah. L, everyone is curious, oh, yeah. everyone's excited about it. Um, and sure enough, Wayne. Uh, yeah, that would <laughs> exactly. be a that strange be, world if Android be, fans' thankfully. interest in the next version of Android waned. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Amazing Ron uh, Ron Amadeo over at Ars Technica, our buddy Ron, or the other Ron. Um, he scoured countless hours of Google I.O. video um, fr from the footage from the event and, and some of the latest leaks to compile a list of screens to showcase, in one way or another, the material design direction that Google is taking with its in-house apps. So this is a really great... And again, he just like where is he yeah, finding the time to do this I know, stuff? Right? But uh, puts together a really comprehensive view of what material design will look like, you know, across the suite of applications. Now, Joe, I you know, you guys obviously you create a a, a replacement keyboard. So material yep. design, in and of itself, I mean, does that even how does that play into the picture for a for a company like yours, like SwiftKey? Or does it? I think it's, I mean, it's really important for us to be across what, what Google's doing in the design space. I think ever since, um, was it three or four years ago now, Matthias Duarte joined the Android yep. team. You've yeah. seen this raft of really, really like, uh, you know, each version of Android, there's something new, exciting in the design space. Um, I, I was just uh, familiarizing myself with the material design guidelines, which uh, are, uh, uh, you know, verging on pretentious, but there's some really amazing stuff. <laughs> Highbrow. Yes, to say yeah, the least. Yeah, you know, it's it's like a classic design document. But I think obviously we, as a uh, a key um, developer in the Android space, need to be across uh, what's going on uh, with material design. And uh, you know, already some of the themes that we pushed out with the version five launch um, are pretty close to, to 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 what you know Google's done um, and some of the guidelines there. So you know, I think people who are enjoying the direction Google's going in. Um, you know, should be seeing more more commitment from us in that kind of space as well, because there's clearly a, a strong interest in that kind of flat look and, and, and material. Sure. Well, I think I think it's funny because similar to how when we were introduced to Hollow, um, and when you saw apps that weren't adopting Hollow, like they kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. You'd be yeah, like, at a certain point. Like, It'd be like mm -hmm. it, it reached a, after you know a little while where it's like oh they're, well they're not following the design guidelines and and you now you wouldn't even consider an app in the arena at one point if it <laughs> if it wasn't hollow I make some crazy <laughs> some crazy uh, but I don't think that's I don't think that that's something that's like an outlandish kind yeah. of expectation for users to have at a certain point there was the hollow yolo hashtag if you're on <laughs> on the internet anywhere you'd see that a lot from Android fans which was just like you know it's like hollow to the end hollow hollow or die and any Anything that isn't uh, isn't uh, installed on my phone, so yeah. I don't think it's out there. I mean, there's nothing worse than when you see an iOS app get ported over to Android, and they just literally port over the old at least, but at least back when iOS was still 3D, 3D, and like mm -hmm. you could totally tell, like, oh, this is an iOS app, and they just ported everything over. Like, I want you want to see it integrate in, into the whole kind of system, the ecosystem. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what they do. Additionally, also, you know. Once Google, you know, kind of announces a role, you know, announces a new design direction, uh, now we got to look for when other key elements of the Google world is going to change. Mm -hmm. And the folks over at Android uh, Police got their hands on some screens that are going to show the, the changes to the Google Play Store as it adapts material design, but also gets, if I must say, gets super sexy. 
Uh, yeah, it right? looks pretty, <laughs> looks pretty yeah. enticing. Right? So, so if you scroll down, actually, Brian, they've got screenshots of Google Play before, the current Google Play on the left, and then the, the new Google Play that's going to em, em, embrace the material design. And clearly, you can see now they're, they're basically taking that background graphic as hero shot kind of, you know, kind mm -hmm. of exposure. And and these examples are really interesting because you see, you know, you see a couple of examples where like, ah, well, Ready Player One, like they're just blue in the background, whatever. But when you st when it starts getting into music and movies, it just looks really cool. So, yeah, although, yeah. although there's a lot of coverage there. So yeah. even though it's an image in the back, you really can't, like half right. the time you can't and, read what it is, but, you know. This is clearly a tablet, you know, right, versus, right. versus yeah. a phone and all that sort of stuff. But it's going to be interesting to see it kind of, um, you know, like look at that. Like that's you know straight up on the on the computer screen. Like when you pull up Grand Budapest Hotel, that's cool. And yeah. you know, press play, you get to watch the trailer. I mean, it's it's a neat little. It doesn't actually work, Brian. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, see, it's, it's me wonder too because yeah. you know we spend a lot of time on our videos when we when we um, create new versions of the app and we sure. we put them onto the Google Play Store. And for a while, the Play front ends felt a little bit tired, and so this is a really kind of a welcome refresh, I think. And uh, I'm curious to see if that big hero graphic with the play button is going to actually mean more people watch the video because a lot of people watch videos right now. I, it's it's kind of amazing when you look at the hits that we get on some of the stuff we put up there. Oh, that, that, that's become my new favorite pastime. As I'm looking for apps in the arena, I'm watching all those videos uh -huh. and like and and sometimes making fun of them because yeah. it's just like, <laughs> some know, people do it better than others. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I look, mean, it's we're funny. Developers, it, we're not video you know creators. Well, no, it's, <laughs> it's funny because I remember well, having we, a conversation. We try. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine years ago. This must have been like two or three years. Someone who was actually at Revision Three, um, and then was saying, you know, listen, like there's going to be a market to produce videos for startups and to produce videos for yeah, apps true. because more and more. Mm -hmm. And I kind of laughed it off. I'm like, nobody watches those videos and everybody rolls their eyes at those and stuff like that. But sure enough, now I'm watching them all. Turns out it's incredibly important. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. in some ways it's the only thing that people will see yeah. uh, by, by a large degree because yeah. they want to know how the app works yeah. and... You know, if it's if it's just a, a dark camera shot, you know, onto a screen with and then you can go like this, like you're only gonna make it so far in there. Right. But apparently if you've got big splashy fonts that move in and yeah. you know, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how to make those videos, but, uh, well, we, but they yeah, are we, getting we, we mull over it at length and the, yeah. the amount of hours that we spend on um, the soundtrack websites listening to different dubstep remixes for <laughs> the background. <laughs> The royalty-free music, right? Like, the <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, before we move on from Android L, just one thing that's on the run now. But real quickly, yeah. I know we're all we're still wondering what the candy name is going to be. But have uh -huh. you noticed a groundswell of people thinking they're going to leave the candy name? I got a bunch of people on Twitter asking me what I thought of the rumors that they were. It was that L represents L is the Roman numeral for fifty. And this is technically Android 5, version 5.0. Uh -huh. And so do you think they're going to abandon the candy for a Roman numeral naming? Half-Life 3 is confirmed. <laughs> I don't know. I think people are going to find, you know, that's kind of the fun of this, right? Yep, it's like yep. people are going to find every little minute detail that points to one way or another. And, oh, then it must, but it was it really, must be the case. And this is probably one of those things yeah. where Google's just sitting back laughing because people are falling for it. And it was really funny because, like, in the span of two days, like, I got hit, like, numerous times on different platforms. People asked me the same question. Question. I was like, and I was looking for the source. I was like, where is this coming from? But yeah, yeah, so, yeah. it's funny. No, it and is. really, they're just going to turn around at the end of it and call it lollipop, and everyone's going to yep. be like, "Oh, it was so well, obvious." See, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still holding out for Laffy Taffy. I doubt it's going to happen. Uh, I think but, that's you know, more because it's copyrighted. It's oh, trademark. Well, hey, yeah, that, yeah. that didn't stop him for yeah. KitKat. Well, I feel like the KitKat integration was a little more, uh, you know. Widespread than Laffy Taffy. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? You go, you go to this oh. the deli and you, you see a thing of Laffy Taffy with the Google logo. It's like five ten cents. Yeah, <laughs> win a win a Google Nexus phone with your Taffy. Uh, don't underestimate the power of Laffy Taffy, Rob. All right, all right. All right um, real quick here, if you maybe heard that Samsung was ditching its Knox security entirely. Uh, I can probably think again, although there have been a lot of kind of things that have popped up over the past few days about this. First, at Google I.O., you may remember Sundar Pichai uh, unceremoniously announced that Android was going to be integrating pieces, at least, a part of Samsung's Knox security into the OS. Uh, and then Forbes, a few days ago, published a piece claiming that not only would Google... Uh, incorporate Knox into the OS, but that Samsung would basically abandon it entirely, which sounded kind of strange considering it's Samsung's security 
uh, platform and you would think kind of important to all of their efforts, uh, but that they would be handing the keys over to Google. Of course, everybody, you know, kind of freaked out a little bit about that. And Knox apparently, and I don't know if this is confirmed, has around a 2% market uptake for the, <laughs> the security, which isn't a great number. Although when you're talking Samsung numbers in general of devices out there, it still could be pretty significant, but you know, 2% doesn't sound that big. Well, uh, Samsung published an official statement few days ago and basically reaffirming its commitment to the develop of de development of Knox as a security platform for Android devices and also for you know all of their their devices potentially I would imagine you know possibly ties in they didn't say that but yeah. you know which would be another reason why you know maybe Knox shouldn't go anywhere uh, if they have great ambitions with ties in which we know that they do um, and if you don't know what Knox is just real quick um, it's a way it's basically a security system that separates your work from your personal items on those phones in a secure manner. Kind of similar to Google's um, acquisition of Divide a yep. few months ago. Yep. Um, they, they kind of, they're probably going to play hand in hand, I imagine, when Google integrates this into Android. So um, I don't know. So I don't know how, what there is really to say about that, but. So they've there were a lot of there were a lot of people that were that were like this makes absolutely no sense and uh, yeah. Well, I, I like when a, a news announcement announcement is that a company is reiterating their commitment. I know. It's like no 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 <laughs> we're still in it we're still we're still here we're still on it so. Um, yeah, yeah I guess. and I haven't used Knox right. security. I have, I'm I'm part of the 98 percent apparently. Uh, do you have a Do you have a Samsung device? Have you used this at all, Joe? I, I've I've used a few of them, but um, we have all of our uh, company stuff in just Google Apps, so it's, it doesn't really work as as far as I'm concerned. I don't think it's compatible. Right. So I haven't come across it. But I, what appeared to happen wasn't there an exclusive in time or something that said that uh, Knox was. Oh, well, Forbes. Yeah, it was Knox Forbes. Was getting canned. Exactly. Yeah, and then they've said, no, 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 it's fine. It's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, they've kind of backed away and, and put out their official statement. So um, I suppose we should trust Samsung over Forbes at this point. But yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm very, I'm very curious to see, because it, it just it kind of blew me away that it, part of that announcement was, oh, by the way, we're taking part of Samsung's, you know, uh, their secret sauce and integrating Man. it into Android. Yep. Uh, probably not the entire piece, but I'm very curious to see what Samsung um, gives to Google uh, to integrate into Android and how, how that helps in the enterprise because definitely Android needs a boost in the enterprise. So. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, in addition to Android Wear, one of the other loves of our community is Chromecast. Um, I'm a recent convert. I can't get enough of it. I've completely... I, Jason, can I tell you, I have not turned on my Google TV in weeks now i've been because of chromecast i'm 100 chromecast now see um i mean well I, and it also has to do at the same time that i finally got plex set up in my house and i okay. finally set up sick beard i finally set up all these so i kind of improved my back-end infrastructure and you have plex working and with have chromecast. plex working with chromecast okay. and but it is just oh it's beautiful it's yeah it's elegant so oh, yes it. i love it um but uh, a great little bit of functionality is now available on your Chromecast. Um, oh, can we actually we can I, actually show it. I think so so I have to apologize in advance. We have one monitor. Uh, so Joe, you're you're not going away. <laughs> you're just going away <laughs> on this monitor for a second. Uh, and we still think you're awesome. Uh, <laughs> but Chromecast, our other good friend. Chromecast is waiting. Chromecast is apparently so going to pop up. So here. if you if you so on the Google Chrome blog, they announced that now you can mirror your Android screen on your TV with Chromecast. And so here I just open up the Chromecast app on my phone and you see that it's giving me the little update that cast screen is now available. Mm -hmm. You can cast what you what you see in your device's screen to your TV. Okay, I got it. All right. So I gotta turn my Wi Fi. So let me turn on Wi Fi. Oh, I don't know if I'm on the if I'm on the network here. Or oh, not. Hopefully, yeah, that's hopefully. that's kind yeah. of the trick. Yeah. You gotta be on Wi Fi, of course. Yeah. Um Oh, maybe you are. <laughs> this didn't work out so hot, I Ron. I wasn't planning to demo this. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. I might actually. Now. Nah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm actually not on any of the Twit Wi-Fis on my phone. I am on my tablet, but my tablet didn't have the update yet. All right. Well, it well works. anyway, so what you could do is you could switch the TV. Let me disconnect that. But so basically what it allows you to do is take anything that's on your phone now and you can cast it to the television. So what that means is that oh, you can. Um, there we go. Oh, I there we go. It. Cool. There it is. So literally this is coming from Jason's phone. And so now uh, there's 30 minutes to his doctor, which is kind of funny. Oh. But um, so the Bye, doctor. 
So the scenario of you've got pictures from your vacation on your phone, you want to show them to your friend, just throw it up on Chromecast, you do it directly from the thing, that that worked great. Um, there are other, you know, basically any sort of apps or anything like that that, don't, that does not have Chromecast support. Now you can just cast it to the screen and sure Whatever YouTube does, but yeah, you know. you, yeah, but exactly, but but um, you know, sure in the phone scenario, you're Barbie Life of the Dream House. Oh wow, See? you just <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, go ahead and play yeah. this. I think go. I think people will really appreciate this yeah. cartoon. So this is pretty cool, yeah. right? There you so. go. Um, yeah, I, I was tested at home, not with Barbie Life in the Dream House. Uh, my daughter tested this uh, at sure. home. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> um, and yeah, you have to have uh, obviously the faster you're kind of set up at home. Yeah. And I imagine with uh, 802.11 AC, it would be better. And my, yeah. my home wireless is not set up with AC. Right. Um, or if so, you live in a very small apartment like I do. Yeah. Where like my like, Chromecast is right there and the phone's right there. Yeah, but like, I was I was not yeah. far from the Chromecast really? and yeah. I was getting audio stuttering. Oh, interesting. Uh, when I was casting to it. So I don't know. But other people have had great results. So I think it. It just all depends. But hey, very cool to be able to do that. There's an entire uh, industry around video entertainment that Google does not want on Chromecast that are very happy at this update. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you can read between those lines. But, yeah, so there you go. If you've been waiting for that little bit of functionality to uh, <laughs> be casted, uh, you're going to be happy with this. Google just made your day. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, yes, welcome. Very welcome change there. And I also read last week, I don't know if you can still hear me, but yes. um, yep. there I am. Uh, we always could. <laughs> the, the Chromecast is now the number one streaming device in the US. Is that right? 3.8 million were sold last year or something. And that puts Apple TV in third spot, which uh, was a surprise to me when I saw it. But, you know, I guess that $35 price tag is what's driving it. I was just going to say, yeah, the $35 price tag, it's just a no-brainer to try. And now that so many, you know, like, for example, the the entire world, I think not the entire, but probably 75% of the World Cup, I, I use Chromecast to watch. I use the Watch, the watch ESPN app, and I watch mm -hmm. it on my TV at home. It was great. Mm -hmm. It just works. That's what I like about the future. It just works. So then, uh, if it's great and it just works and it does what you need, and actually it replaced Google TV, which Android TV is yep. similar to, do you feel like Android TV is unnecessary, or does no, it fill a different void? No, I think void? I still get Android TV because I'm a big fat TV nerd. Yeah. Um, and G Android TV basically is a Chromecast, right? It's got Chromecast. Well, in it has it. it. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. piece of it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so if I can still do the same so stuff, it's like but Chromecast that, with yeah, with, with more. So I mean, yeah. the, the problem now is when I need a Blu-ray player because <laughs> Google TV is my <laughs> Blu-ray player essentially oh. now. Yeah. So, but uh, I'll cross that bridge. Of course, I, when was the last time I actually watched a Blu-ray? I was going to say, uh, yeah. 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 Blu-ray, what is that? Uh, yeah. But anyway, so, uh, no, but when Android TV comes out, you know I'll be, I'm, I'll be right there. Yeah. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. So. Awesome. Well, um, let's talk SwiftKey for a few minutes here. You, uh, to say that SwiftKey has had a big, uh, crazy month. Uh, maybe a little bit more than a month at this point, but that would be kind of an understatement. Uh, <laughs> you guys have, uh, have. I mean, I feel like there's there's news about SwiftKey uh, coming fast and hard the last month uh, like crazy. Uh, the theme store, SwiftKey 5 going free, that was a pretty big deal. Uh, iOS version right around the corner. How uh, <laughs> how has this been going for you guys? I have to imagine it's been kind of crazy days in the office. Yeah, just no sleep and... Yeah. Uh, Keeping going the whole time. I mean, it's it's been it's been really fun. Um, we've been working on this stuff for a while, and it's really you know when you work on something for for most of the the year and then you want to get it out there, it's it's good to sort of finally give it to people and see their reaction and talk about it publicly and um, and and it's been a, a whirlwind. I think you know in in four weeks we had over twelve million themes downloaded. Wow. Um, which is an amazing uh, number, if you think about it. Um, it was prior to launching the theme store, it was our number one request from users was, we want to change the way it looks. We want to have more choice. We want to do so much more with it. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool that people have received that so well. Um, and, you know, going free has been something that uh, I've wanted us uh, to do for a while. And, uh, and across the company, we've had a real strong commitment to that. And, uh, and, and so it's great that now, finally, when you meet someone in a, in a bar or a, at a train station or whatever, and you talk about the, the app, you can uh, convince them uh, much, much more quickly <laughs> to download it. Um, and uh, you know, you know how Android is with, with uh, you know, especially new users. They don't really often have their uh, 
payment method uh, in, inserted mm-hmm. into the, the the Play Store. So, you know, now it's just, you know, get the app, love it. And then over time, if you want to customize it more, then, yeah, there's this whole cool place where you can go in and change the, the theme and, uh, and download multiple different looks for your keyboard. So, yeah, it's an exciting time. So with the, with the thought being, of course, that you're going to get way more free users using the app than you this are paid users. This is one of those users. awesome app videos. No, hey, I was, it I, really I, is. This it, is a very it, impressive well video, done. Joe. I'm, I'm down with it. It's, it's well done. Yeah. So it's, it's really driven by two things. I think yeah. one of the things is that we've we've spotted for a long time that um, freemium as a model on, on Android is, is is really the lion's share of the market. And uh, and that's, um, you know, a really interesting uh, direction for us to go in. So it's it's great to finally be part of this sort of freemium move. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and the second thing is just sort of pure growth. Um, you know, if you don't have to pay for an app, you get a lot more downloads. And, um, you know, it's you, you, the, the kind of the, the thought processes that people go through when they look at a free app are, are, are far more about Oh, install. Yeah, okay. Rather than you know, do I pay four dollars for this app? And and so just really being able to take away that that thought process. Even though we had a trial before, but you know, it's just any yeah. hurdle in in getting people to adopt something um, really sort of you know causes uh, a lot of people to to fall off. So now we don't have those hurdles. We can just focus on building a great product and then uh, monetizing it through uh, the addition of great uh, features and, and and themes and so on. Sure. So, so now you said there have been over 12 million themes downloaded. How, what, what, and without divulging any, you know, kind of mm-hmm. private information or anything like that. But how much of those are actually paid conversion themes versus the free stuff? You know, like are you seeing the revenue that you're lost by making the app free yeah. be made up by the themes that by the you know by the added costs? Yeah, because that's yeah. probably that's, I, I, we yeah. we don't comment really on on, on right. revenue as, as a general rule. But I think what I'd like to say is that it's been really encouraging. One of the Good. things that we did was. Um, when we launched uh, the, the app as a free app, we gave anyone who had paid for the app in the past 10, 10 themes for free, yep. Yep. what we call the premier pack. And, and that um, went really well. You know, people, I think one of the big kind of things you worry about when you when you take a price tag away is all of a sudden all your most loyal users are going to go nuts at you and say, how dare you do this? And And so we really spent a lot of time focusing on how we could create um, a, a great experience for people who had paid for the app and give them a lot of added value. And yeah. uh, and that went really well. So, you know, I think in the transition moments to free, that was the lion's share of uh, uh, of the interaction in the store. But now we've got a really solid momentum behind it. Yeah. So uh, it's exciting times. And you get, and immediately you get a lot of your, your highest um, driven, uh, dedicated users Using the new apps and or using the new themes yep. and talking about them and everything. So I thought yeah. I thought that was a good value. Absolutely, oh, great. that was yeah, that was a brilliant move. Good mm-hmm. work. What, what I mean, the other interesting thing, just talking about material design and, and Android L, is that the the number one top downloaded theme um, on on the theme store is is called Minimal Black, uh, and that really sort of echoes a lot of the the look and feel of. Um, the, the kind of approach that Google's going for with material design. So I think, uh, if anything, what that shows is that the market is really re- requesting and desiring that kind of look and feel, you know, very sort of solid flat colors uh, and, and the kind of material finish. And, and hopefully, uh, therefore, I think what, what Google's doing with, with the platform as a whole is going to be really well received. So that was that was another interesting insight that we got uh, through making this transition. Well, that, sure. have you thought about have you thought about naming one of the themed keyboards material? <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, it, it, the thought has crossed our mind. Is that too so. obvious? Is that is that too easy? I don't know. I think people would be looking for that. Or call it yeah. L, or call it L right. keyboard, you know, like, like there's all these. The L theme, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we're excited for, for, for Android L, let's, let's put it that way. And I think that, you know, the, the design team is uh, looking at, uh, at what what's coming and, and thinking about how we can build some really beautiful experiences to echo and, and build upon it. Um, and so, so that's exciting. What else is coming is, of course, uh, the, iOS. The elephant in the room. I was going to say, are we going to go there? I'm glad. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Are you all, about, all about Android. I, yeah. No, I, I, think, I, mean, that- I think it's I think it's fascinating um, because I have to imagine for you guys, you know, you've been doing this three, four years, four years now. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I wonder if anywhere during that time you ever thought that it would be a possibility to do what you're doing on Android, this open ecosystem that really lets developers go run wild, um, 
for iOS, which is, you know, by comparison, a little bit more closed down. Uh, some people would remove the a little bit from that sentence. <laughs> um, but uh, so how has that experience been? That, that Did that come out of nowhere for you and you just had to, you know, respond quickly once Apple kind of lifted the veil or well, have you always one, one been planning for this? We, we've always been aspiring to be on, on iOS. And sure. in January, we launched an app on iOS called SwiftKey Note, which is a kind of a, um, a companion app for Evernote users that right. allows you to use SwiftKey's technology and save it into the Evernote platform. So we'd already got something out there. Um, we, we've been really interested in the platform for a long time, but this news is really exciting. What it, what it means for us is that, um, you know, all of a sudden we have um, another very, very large user base to create some uh, some great experiences for, and uh, and we're working really hard on doing that right now. So um, the the thing I think really for the Android users out there is to to sort of really triple underline is that we haven't lost any focus on on making uh, products for you guys either. I mean that remains our core user base right now. For about a week, I think it was a week between the. Uh, iOS uh, keynote and then the SwiftKey 5 announcement mm -hmm. and uh, we were sort of sitting on our hands for a week as, as, as a ton of people um, in the Android community were sort of uh, up in arms going oh no this is it they're going to lose focus they're never going to do anything for us ever again and then we were like just give us a few right. days and right, right. here we are like here's the thing that we've been working <laughs> on um, so you know I think we're, we're really committed to, to, to doing something awesome on both platforms but um, sure. yeah it's exciting times wow Cool stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, great way to kind of spin what what users thought was just what it was, what it has been, and turn it into something new. And uh, that's, I think, that's incredibly important in this in this day and age of uh, you know marketing your app. I think I think the big challenge, and we've talked about it a lot on the show, is if you're a developer, particularly if you're an indie developer of of an app, and you come out with a price tag. Uh, that price tag, you know, you only have so much bandwidth in your life to support that price tag, that yeah. one purchase. Uh, and that's pro and that's probably a big reason why freemium is working so well on both sides, right? Developers love it because they can add into value after the fact. Yep. So it's free, you know, free to get the app, but they get value from things like, you know, themes and, and other things from inside the app. And users love it because they, well, some, pe some people I would say don't because they don't want to have to pay after the fact, but a lot of users obviously love it because freemium is so successful and it gives them the ability to do things like customize further and, uh, you know, and choose to pay for those extra features. So I think it's a great yeah. way to continue monetizing uh, when it could be, you know, it could have been very easily the situation where, well, what we've made is what we've made and how do we even go beyond this? Mm -hmm. I think that's a Yeah, and I think move. that's that's really important for us because, you know, for, for a while, and this may sound really ridiculous, but a lot of people have been uh, tweeting us and writing to us saying, I want to give you more money. You know, yeah. I, I paid 10 cents for the app in a sale two years ago. <laughs> right. And I feel bad because I use it every day <laughs> and it's my favorite app. And, yep. you know, it, it's hard to react to that stuff. But, you know, what we're wanting to do now is to really build out some sort of momentum behind the other things that you can do with your keyboard. You know, we did some research recently and the keyboard is, um, on average, uh, our users have it open for about 54 minutes a day, which is a, a remarkable amount of time if you think about it. Wow. And, um, you know, if you look at, I think Flurry put, uh, put a report out that said that Google and Facebook apps combined uh, are about three quarters of an hour, sort of 45 minutes. So we're, we're sort of more engaging and more used than Google and Facebook apps on a daily basis, if you believe the hype. And, right. you know, absolutely, that is an opportunity for us to do a, a lot. And if you are staring at that interface for that long, almost an hour a day, you want to be able to customize it. You want to be able totally. to do great things with it. And so there's a lot of opportunity there, I think. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, well, great work. I'm loving what we're seeing and uh, just kind of cool news. I, I think yeah. you guys, <laughs> you well, came it, out with a lot of, of great news in a short amount of time. Well, I, you know, and I think it's really interesting to see like a, a company and an application that is, you know, has, like you said, has been there for a while in the trenches doing it. And it's so easy now for Google and Apple to adapt and in, and take someone else's innovation and pull it into the whole system mm -hmm. and it becomes kind of like an underdog thing where I'm rooting for SwiftKey you know like you know because it's like we've seen Google add 
you know, swiping function. We've seen, you know, things like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I suppose I suppose it's an underdog yeah. thing if you consider that Google is a huge company, but still, uh, when you compare what each app does, yeah, yeah. I don't consider SwiftKey the underdog. Because, Interesting. Yeah, that, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I guess it depends on how you look at it. But anyways, we'll, we'll take we'll take you rooting for us. Whoever wants to root for us there for whatever go. reason. We, there we, we go. We all right. All right. That's that's how we're, yeah. And giving you money, right? Fair that's enough. a good thing. <laughs> Please, yeah. Just, just take my money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. cool. Well, great stuff there. Uh, we should fun. do an ad read. Yeah. Let's, uh, we want to thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. I love to learn, and lynda.com is the place to do it. Lynda.com helps you learn and keep up to date with your software, pick up brand new skills, and explore new hobbies with their easy to follow video tutorials. Whether you want to design and develop your own website, improve your photography skills, or learn about mobile development, lynda.com offers thousands of video courses in a variety of topics. At lynda.com, you'll learn how to code, create, and build Android applications in Java, from the foundations of object-oriented Java programming to using the Android API to create engaging mobile apps. For any software you use, including Photoshop, Muse, InDesign, Microsoft Office, and more, lynda.com can help you stay current with product updates and learn all the ins and outs of your software tools to be more efficient and productive in your professional and personal life. Lynda.com recently updated their Android app to provide Chromecast support. How about that? Pretty mm -hmm. cool. Uh, so now uh, the app offers online course, offers offline courses and video viewing, making, making it easy and convenient to learn even environments without internet access, which is key. You're on a flight, you want to watch, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, you know, you lose your internet at home or something like that. It's great to be able to still, you know, still be able to plug in and watch it. Totally. Lynda.com users can move seamlessly between mobile and desktop applications. With over 2,400 courses and more added weekly, all lynda.com courses are produced at the highest quality, not like the homemade videos on YouTube. Uh, so definitely you see the level of quality that Lynda brings with the experts and the content that they've got within their videos. Lynda.com works directly with software companies to provide timely training. Often the same day new versions of releases hit the market so you're always up to speed. At lynda.com, the instructors are accomplished professionals at the top of their fields and passionate about teaching. Courses for all experiences, uh, experience levels, from beginner, e intermediate, and advanced, and you can watch from your computer, tablet, or mobile device. So whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish. You can also search the transcripts to find quick answers or read along with the video, which is key, which is a great function. It's only $25 a month to access the entire lynda.com course, course library. Or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which includes exercise files that let you follow along with the instructors using the same project assets they do. And you can try lynda.com right now for a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash allaboutandroid to access the entire library. It's over 2,000 courses free for seven days. Think of all the knowledge you can absorb in a week. Mm -hmm. That's lynda.com slash allaboutandroid. And we thank Linda for their support. Thank you, Linda. Uh, yeah. Been invaluable to me uh, in learning uh, Premiere because which is the man. superior video editing software. <clears throat> well, that's what I've been using it since '06. Uh, okay, well, yeah. but I still I suppose I, it's what you're comfortable with. Then, well, Ron. With, with the new version, I did watch a couple of videos to learn go. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Linda's awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, let's fly through some hardware. We'll fly through it. <laughs> So we were talking about iOS, and uh, when we were talking to Joe about SwiftKey, uh, it turns out Samsung's is is kind of putting the, the eye of Samsung onto Apple mm -hmm. as they get ready as to... As they <laughs> are want to do. Yes, they are. <laughs> the impending iPhone 6 uh, announcement is uh, stirring up rumors of a new Samsung phone, a new Samsung Galaxy flagship phone that isn't the S5. Supposedly, the Galaxy Alpha is a new high-end smartphone in Samsung's line that's made to compete directly with the upcoming iPhone 6. With the, with the device launch in August. It's supposed to be an even higher-end device than the S5 and might bring it with it an all-metal chassis and other premium design features. Think of it as a mix between the S5 and the Note with some HTC One <laughs> M8 thrown in there for good, just for good measure, just yeah. to get it in there. Yeah. So uh, Mix it all in a vat. It's a Samsung, man. They just, they, just don't, they just don't sleep. They're hungry. Throw it against the wall. Yeah. See what sticks. Yeah, we'll see. Apparently everything sticks yeah. in some way, shape, or form. The Galaxy Alpha. <laughs> Yeah, then I, I think this has been kind of rumored in yeah. in many different ways, and I think some people thought that the S five was going to be you know the all metal chassis, and right. I really wouldn't be surprised if at some point Samsung's like, fine, you plastic haters, here's your all metal <laughs> chassis, and some people would think that that would be me being well, a plastic. And hater. I also think it's funny that they're they're you know it's it's aiming at 
targeting the iPhone 6 when yeah. what uh, what yeah. time of year is it? It's right. the roll out the new phone time of year yeah, because exactly. school's starting and the holidays are coming and you know have we, haven't we figured out that Q3 is the new phone time? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But. Fine. So there we go. I don't know. Uh, Samsung with a metal, all metal chassis. Uh, does that do it for you, Joe? Yeah, I really, I, I'd love an all metal chassis. That's a word that we would say chassis, but Chas let's not go there. Yeah. Ch chassis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't even know I love this. A good metal chassis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the avoidance of doubt, I saw in the chat some people were saying, "Is he in London or is he in San Francisco?" I'm in San Francisco yes. in, in our offices here. Just. <laughs> it's 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 the uh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. God bless the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So what does Sony have going on? Their next flagship phone, the Sony Xperia Z3, is getting all leaky with a nice photo gallery and a list of specs. So if you're a Sony fan, uh, you might be looking forward to this device. Quad-core 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon 801 processor, micro SIM slot, micro SD slot, a dedicated camera shutter key. I feel like we're kind of seeing the resurgence yeah. of the hardware camera shutter key again. Instagram. Uh, yeah. All, ca all, the, all the, the, the amateur photographers and their Because it kind of went away and now, now it's, it's like back. coming back. Because yeah. I feel like it was the right idea, the wrong megapixel. Oh, okay. Like I don't think the cameras were there yet. You know, right, the so. right idea. The wrong, wrong megapixel. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong megapixel. Okay, now that I'm done writing that down. Uh, <laughs> dust water resistant with port covers similar to the previous models and then a 20.7 megapixel image sensor. I believe that's similar to the previous models as well. So if you're a Sony fan, you are hopefully aren't going to have to wait long for your next flagship and I would love to play, play with it because their hardware is pretty good. Their software... It's a little bit desired, in my opinion, but agreed. Um, but yes, uh, I think this next thing is kind of this interesting, next thing though. is really cool, actually. So, uh, well, but uh, yes and no. But anyway, uh, so <laughs> have you ever thought about getting a secondary screen for your phone? Maybe okay. one that was running. I have e now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> An external e-ink display, maybe. Okay. Um, maybe good enough for 19 hours of continuous use and reading. That could be interesting. Um, and in, uh, Ink Case Plus is a project that's, uh, that's up on Kickstarter currently that adds a second standalone e-ink screen to your Android phone that is part of the case that you add to your phone uh -huh. that, that would allow you to utilize kind of text-based reading or, you know, it's interesting kind of on the go, you know, for reading books while traveling. Or if you scroll down more, Brian, you see the guy, the, the use case there of a guy on a bicycle with the cycling information. That's and a that long bike ride. Yeah, right. 19, hours. Yeah. 19 hours, yeah. But uh, the idea is that the screen utilizes the e-ink display similar to the Pebble Watch, and uh, it, it, tie, it ties into your phone via a case and gives you more screen time for a longer time, less kind of draining, and, and actually just a second screen for your phone. Um, they're up on Kickstarter right now. They have 30 days to go, to, and they've already exceeded their goal. Oh, they're never going to make it. Yeah, I know. Their goal is $100,000. As you can see here, they've raised 128000 in a day? Uh, in a, a day. Yeah, in a yeah. day. So, um, it's one of those. One it's of one those. of those Kickstarters. So now we'll see if they can do it. Yeah. Look at this video. This is a great Kickstarter video. I know. The same people <laughs> yeah. that are making app review videos, uh, they they got to <laughs> they gotta find a second kind of revenue stream. We had a stream. nice day for their video. When we made the SwiftKey 5 video, it was cloudy, so we put all these really cool grades on just to make it look kind of just funky. <laughs> you do what yeah, you got to do. Yeah. We just should have shot it in San Francisco, what we're thinking in London. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. You're taking your chances in San Francisco, too, for a cloudy day as well. But it's interesting that, that it, it's it's got some, I mean, it's black and white and it's e-ink, and I'm yeah. not a big fan of that, but they're, they're showing graphics, they're showing maps, they're showing things. It's not just text, you know? It's uh, Yeah, I mean, e-ink. But I don't understand know, what, what the, what, I mean, yes, you don't drain your, because the thing is your your display does take the most amount of your Oh, display. yes, it does. Yeah. Absolutely does. So why not just make an e-ink phone? Well, there's the Autophone, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the Yoda phone or the yeah, Autophone yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. with the e-ink on the back and regular screen. It's like party in the front yeah. or party in back, business in front. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's interesting. It does add a lot of, of heft. Bulk. To, yeah, it's look not at just it. Yeah, look case. at this. I mean, yeah. like. It's where where does this stand versus the Pebble? Because I got a Pebble recently, and I, I think it's great. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's really a, a great form factor. The whole notion of not having to open your phone is, is I think, a lot more useful when you're talking about something that's on your wrist rather sure. than you've already pulled your phone out of your pocket. You may as well glance at what's happening. Right. Um, so to what extent do you think this, this crushes the Pebble? 
use case of e-ink or, or do you think it's going to sit nicely alongside it? Yeah, I don't know if this if this crushes the pebble. I think it's very similar, though, and particularly when you're talking about, you know, Pebble has its own app store and it integrates with, you know, both Android and iOS. This is only Android from what I understand, yeah. but it does the same thing where it has its own app. So it's not running Android necessarily. It's a companion to Android. It's running its own standalone kind of OS with their own apps that they create. So right. I think it's kind of similar, you know, and, and I guess the use case is very different here too, right? Like e-ink, larger display is great for reading. If you fly a lot, this case might actually be yeah. kind of beneficial, although airplanes now have ports that you can plug into and exactly. charge your device. So, but you know, I, I can't don't know. think. I, you know, no, actually, I think it's interesting. I, I, I don't want one. Well, well what's funny? What's funny <laughs> is that, like, I, I was just saying, like, I can't think of a scenario where I need extended battery life where I can't yeah. plug in. But honestly, I'm a week out of San Diego Comic Con where, like, I'm ready to buy four extra Mophie devices just to make sure that my phone never dies because if my phone yeah. dies, I'm dead, you know? And so could this be the thing to keep the phone going during a co long conference day and that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, it's you know, cool enough. Innovation. Yeah, yeah, enough for $128,000 worth of Oh uh, Yeah, and, and with 29 days to go, uh, they are going to be... Uh, cheered fun. on by a lot of people because they're gonna they're gonna do a lot more with that number, yeah. and uh, yeah, we'll see where that ends up. But it doesn't beat the latest fad uh, in displays in in Android. Oh, uh, would this be Android on your wrist? Android on your Android Wear. Uh -huh. all, all the kids are talking about it. As I've been out with my eyes, I haven't used my watch nearly as much as I wanted to. Uh, but um, I have right. asked myself this question. There was a good I thought, and it, oh, here it is. Here it is. Ooh, it's the Galaxy uh, Gear. Or wait, wait, Samsung. Yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, the Gear Live. There we go. It's not Galaxy. It's Gear Live. Uh, so there's an interesting article on Time, time.com, and it poses the question, too many Android Wear apps, well, I guess this isn't a question, are missing the point. And it's actually something that I was I was thinking about while I was out yeah. is, you know, the, the App Store, of course, for Android Wear kind of lifted, and we're seeing yeah. a lot of apps and stuff. And Google has... Uh, thanks to Marlon, the guy from Trinidad, for reminding me of this. Google has a page for developers that lists the creative vision for Android Wear. Interesting. Uh, you know, the apps are, are meant to launch automatically, glanceable. Uh, it's about suggesting or demand. So if you do a voice command to demand some information or yeah. it suggests that information to you. And zero to low interaction. That's but a lot of these apps that are coming out now <laughs> are kind of following the smartphone paradigm. Yep. And I just, I think it's an interesting conundrum. What I, what I wonder about, like, for example, Minuum, <laughs> talking about alternative keyboards. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about some of your competition, Joe. Well, that's totally fine. <laughs> Minuum. <laughs> the uh, more the merrier, you know. Let's yeah. change our keyboards, everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and then I'll ask you what uh, what SwiftKey's thinking about uh, Android Wear in a second. But Minuum uh, has posted a video about the first typing on Android Wear. Let's just say, let's just say this is a nightmare that I that I do not want to experience for myself. I'm not. I'm not denying that it could be I done. Think you and may everything. have answered the question. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think it's it's interesting though, right? Like developers want to get in there early because this is a new. <laughs> oh my god. A new branch. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it just doesn't look fun. Uh, it's a, it's a new kind of uh, offering. Obviously, Android as a whole is very you know inundated with apps, so it's really hard to stand out. Android Wear is very new. Yeah. So the earlier you get in and put your wares out there, whether it's good or bad, uh, it has high li higher likelihood of being downloaded and used. But I think in some ways it runs the risk of developers kind of taking the smartphone paradigm of this thing can do everything yeah. uh, and you, know, you want to do it all on the screen and applying it to the watch, which could actually kind of damage yeah. perception of the watch. I don't, what, what do you guys think of this? Is this... Is this out there? What do you think, Joe? I mean, I, I'm sort of sitting on the fence. I think that the idea of typing an extended text message or something on, on a watch versus just taking your phone out of your pocket, it's probably not something I would do. But, you know, I'm happy to be proven wrong if someone finds a great compelling use case for typing sure. on a watch. Right now, you know, we're, we're watching and we're, we're learning and we're interested in, in what's coming. And, um, you know, I think the Minium keyboard is really cool. Flexi have done something as well that integrates with um, a gear. And, you know, those are both uh, really sort of interesting use cases. I, I just, I, I'm not sure it's ready for the prime time. I'm not sure that many people would download a, a keyboard just for their phone. I think they would, uh, sorry, for their watch, they would stick with the phone or the tablet for yeah. anything that's kind of more than one or two words.
Well, it's funny because la last week when we were talking about Android Wear and we were talking about the launch of the Android Wear store and all that stuff, and you know, I kind of posed the question or I brought it up. I think I did, or maybe I thought it and I didn't say it out loud. But you know, is it going to get to a point where we're going to see an app kind of similar to Holo or the Material Design, where if there's not an Android Wear companion app, is it going to? Am I going to judge? You know, is it going to be like, oh, well, they don't care about you know, like, mm. is does every app need to utilize the watch, you know, as another interface or not? And that's a question. Does, that a lot does of the have. app integrate well with Wear and Chromecast and, and blah 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 yeah, and Glass yeah. and, <laughs> and Auto? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's it's definitely you have the elegant approach following the creative vision, which is you know glanceable and and you know d demand and response yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. But you're gonna get the people who make Flappy Bird and put it on the phone. You know, yeah. like they're gonna make people who are gonna who are gonna do some crazy things, which I think needs to happen too. But that you know that could get in the way of the oh wow this is an amazing device factor because if it gets too cluttered or cluttered sure. people don't understand the screen but yeah. it's early that's that's part of the fun of this now so yeah, yeah have you tried sure. tiny bird on a pebble I, I downloaded it the other day and i can't get beyond like the, the first set of pipes <laughs> <laughs> it's just not so it's either uh, okay. poor, poorly coded or it's just really, really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just terrible at that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just curious to see how it, how it, all, how it all pans out. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it falls into Google's vision of the simpler the better. Like personally, in my experience with it, it's great the way, <laughs> it's great the way it is. Oh, like, they got it right because, the first time? Well, so there was a like, little, okay, there was so a for example, I installed this app that a lot of people kind of have gone nuts over, and hopefully it'll work for you because I was having it's a hard time. It's the Flappy Bird. Uh, right? No, it's not. It's this launcher, right? I it's, was just going to uh, say, if someone came out with a new launcher. It's called Wear Mini Launcher. Yeah. And while I think it's interesting and, and it's nice to have these things, at the same time, I feel like it kind of it complicates what should just be simple. Yeah. And I'm not saying that necessarily Google got it 100% right either. That's what I'm still trying to figure out. Right. If if Google, you know, if that that smart launcher wasn't integrated in there, which it isn't, and you can install it, and that's great, it just adds another layer to something that's supposed to, like, it's supposed to kind of, like, kick that kind of stuff to the curb and be like, no, the beauty of this is that it's all voice-controlled, and uh, that's, you know, how it's done. Uh, at the, on the, you know, on the other hand, Android is built around people saying, well, that's not how I want to use it. Right. I want to use it this way, and so developers... Well, and, and you've also got people who are being... Thumb ring. Hi. You've got people who are being... Um, <laughs> you've got people who are who are just, you know, afraid of change. Yeah. And be like, oh, well, you're going to give me a device without a launcher? How am I going to launch my app? So i got to say it? You know, like, you know, fail. It's You're going to get all yeah. that kind of, you know, inter you know, kind of all those reactions, and so Android gives people the opportunity to answer that question with an application that solves that problem, which is yeah. kind of great at the same time, but then you wonder if it's missing the point. I mean, it's right, a very right. good observation right. that I'm curious about, too. So. There you go. Uh, but overall, I like I like Android Wear, actually. Yeah, I find now, myself now you're just, more... Now you're just rubbing it in. I, I find myself more and more putting this watch on my wrist, Ron. When, so, when are you going to get one? More so than... Well, I'm, I was looking I was looking at the at the Square versions, and I was like... Should I get one now? Two hundred bucks, and then Let's sell, sell it. it, and then get the Moto three hundred and sixty, yeah. and then I was like, "Well, I what understand. if the Moto three hundred and sixty comes out and I can't get it?" Looks like somebody's green with envy. <gasps> <Wow>. <laughs> oh, man. Smash! The three hundred and sixty just looks so much cooler, doesn't it? With that right, yeah, yeah, that's the it's... thing. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, now now try typing on the Minium keyboard on a 360. I would like to see how this works. <laughs> well, that's, so does the Minium Mind 360 bending. go around? Does it curve? Yeah, maybe or? it would. I don't know. Yeah. That Oh, man, that just sounds like a nightmare. Uh, but hey, <laughs> to each their own, right? To that's the beauty own. of Android. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, let's take a quick break and thank another sponsor of today's episode, and that would be Prosper. In 72 hours, you could have $35,000 to cover your needs. What what would you do? Would you pay off your high-rate credit cards, start a business, do that home improvement project? You fill out an easy online application, provide a few details, and see a rate online almost instantly. Prosper offers low fixed rates, unsecured personal loans, no collateral required, 
and has multi-year terms available. And, uh, you know, I had the last couple of weeks off, I had a lot of time to think about all the house projects that I want to do. I also had a lot of time to accumulate uh, hospital bills. So <laughs> let's just say money and me, not so... so it's out of balance there. Yeah, yeah. it's a little yeah. out of balance. So <laughs> Prosper sounds uh, mighty fine. Uh, Prosper is Silicon Valley's answer to personal loans. With Prosper's innovative peer-to-peer -peer lending process, there are no outrageous fees no raising interest rates, and you'll never set foot in a bank. Prosper has more than 2 million members and over a billion dollars in funded loans. It's peer-to-peer -peer lending, distributed lending coming from uh, you know other other peers through Prosper that's lent to you, thanks to Prosper, of course. Uh, kind of similar to you know how peer-to-peer -peer services online work, so very similar. Just go to prosper.com slash twit. You can check your rate instantly without affecting your credit score. And for a limited time, Prosper is offering Twit viewers a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. Go to prosper.com slash Twit. That's a special site just for our viewers. And uh, yeah, up to $35,000 in just three days and a $50 Visa prepaid card. Go to prosper.com slash Twit to check it out. We thank Prosper for their continued support of All About Android and Twit. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Let's, let's quickly do some apps. Apps. I can go for some apps. I can. Yeah, I can I'm go for some hungry. mozzarella sticks, maybe. Yeah. Or, you know, I don't know. Although I'm realizing this uh, first entry could have gone up. It could have. I was. I thought. I, I had thought about it, but, yeah. it, well, but there, well, there wasn't in the in the way much in the way of apps. Are this we week, gonna so. Are we gonna make a whole dedicated section to Android Wear? I don't know. You know, Glass has had its like revolving section. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think it's whatever right. whatever happens, well, speaking, we don't have to force it. Speaking of Android Wear, last week we talked about the uh, the blight on the Android Wear launch which was that there was a problem with paid apps oh, yeah. uh, um, through the Google Play Store. Well, luckily, Google has now pushed the workaround for this. Uh, uh, there's a temporary fix for paid apps uh, to be compatible with Android Wear, but it's up to developers to make that change. Developers need to place the wearable APK in a different directory, uh, and then that will, uh, and for those you technical folks, <laughs> if you need to res slash raw instead of assets or rest slash raw instead of assets slash directory for those keeping track at home. So uh, that will then solve the problem. So it's on the developers to fix that, but at least there's a temporary fix. What a what a bummer problem. That's like, got to be like paid apps. You know, and the thing you're is, I know, you know that they were like, we're launching on this day, we're doing this, Google I.O. is coming up, and they're like, stuff yeah. like that. Okay, test it, test it, and, and it just takes somebody going, oh, what happens if this is a paid app? And I bet you know, <laughs> like, it's like the human error in QA. Yeah. It happens, yeah. totally happens. Uh, well, and that's why we had to go freemium. <laughs> right. See, you bypass all of these problems. Yeah. Wait a minute. Android Wear? What are you, what are you saying? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, <kidding. laughs> I'm Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, but if you are an aspiring developer, um, there's some actually some pretty good news. So Google and Udacity have teamed up to create a course, a really comprehensive and excellent looking course on developing Android apps. It's straight from Google, uh, Rado Meyer, and a bunch of other uh, folks that if you kind of follow Android developers on, on YouTube and on the Google site um, and follow the content that they're doing, they're involved in this. And uh, it's meant for folks who already have a working knowledge of Java or other object-oriented programming languages. And again, uh, you can you can use you know Linda for example yep. to to yep. learn that stuff. It's just a great way. Uh, this vid whole video course is just a great way to kind of get in there and learn from the folks at Google. Uh, you know, s some ways to tackle programming uh, for Android. You can access. Rito the looks so cheesy in that lab coat. <laughs> yeah, that's that lab coat's kind of his thing. No, yeah. it's, it's, I, I've met the guy a few times. Yeah. It's just like, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Again with the lab coat. Uh, you can get access to the course videos. It's kind of confusing when you go to the video when when you go to the page because it looks like you have to pay $150 a month. You don't actually. The the beauty of Udacity is that all of their course videos, I believe, are free. And then if you pay more, maybe not all of their videos, but definitely on this one. Uh, so you can basically take the course for free. You just won't get, um, I think, for $150 a month more, you get additional features like uh, some, some of these projects that you can do, class projects, personalized coaching, and a certificate of completion. But, I mean, you get basically get this, this course for free direct That's from Google cool. on how to program for Android. So if you're thinking about getting into it, now is a pretty darn good time to do that. I would give anything to be 17 again. 
and have all the time in the and world. Have all the time, like all, like, like all the time. Like seriously, but you already have a, a cool career. All, yeah, I know, but 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 all the time. I, think about all the time I spent in my college dorm room in 1996 teaching myself JavaScript. Right, going with like this art visual basic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, right. All the stuff we taught ourselves that now just doesn't matter, and like it's just. <laughs> it's true, and especially right. like with YouTube and the yeah. amount of like yeah. the just user created like demos and yep. and walkthroughs and how to you know how to acid wash your your uh, cement sidewalk something i looked at into well, you go, yeah. which you know when i you know when i was younger the cement would, sidewalk well, or, you know, <laughs> cement cement <laughs> cement sidewalk sorry i'm i i do not know what i'm channeling there uh anyways yeah. yeah you you have all this information at your fingers and i literally spent a month hacking a car website trying to figure out how they did the rollovers in javascript and when i did it i felt like i could could, could like i was on Take top on of the, the world. world yeah yeah exactly yeah it was like oh Whereas it was amazing you'd probably you pick up a raspberry pi and you uh, and a, a couple of arduinos and within like a, a week you would have got a <laughs> rocket and you yeah, exactly. right. yeah, yeah. figured out like how to you know i don't know build yeah. a drone or something which is way cooler yeah kids these days they have it easy. Yeah, that's for sure. So, <laughs> speaking of have it easy, uh, we got an email. Um, yeah, speaking of not having it easy. Not having it easy. Uh, yeah. Quite the topic that we talked about last week. Yeah, a lot of email A lot of email about it. Our friend Allison Sheridan from the Noisilla Cast Mac Podcast wrote in, mm. and Allison says, I was listening to All About Android 169 where you guys were talking about the fact that the factory reset on Android only erases the table of contents on Android phones. If you remember, this is related to the creepy... A vast uh, mm -hmm. the story about a vast buying phones off eBay and recovering the data right. to prove you know like one of those things. Uh, Padre went on to explain that he that this has always been true that writing ones and zeros is too kinds time consuming. But then Padre followed up by saying, "quote I love quoting Father Robert. That's great. <laughs> there are no device. Do we have a talking Father Robert, Brian? No. See if you right there we go. That, that, <laughs> there are no, it's in the works. <laughs> there are no devices right now with a factory reset that will do a bit for bit overwrite." And Allison points out the earlier iPhones and iPad touches, iPod touches did have overwrite when the user selected, quote, erase all content and settings. Apple improved on this time consuming method. On the later models, all iPads and iPhones and iPod touches today have hardware encryption. So when you ask for erase all content and settings, all they have to do is remove the encryption key, thereby rendering the data left as useful, useful as random noise. I think this is a clever solution because it achieves the same objective as writing ones and zeros, but is nearly instantaneous so the user is protected even if they are impatient. And mm. Allison pointed out she found this out on a, a knowledge base article over on the Apple site on support.apple.com. And she's curious if whether or not Android actually does the same thing if the device supports hardware encryption. Well, Android just as as an OS does support hardware encryption. Okay. Uh, if I you go I to know that. options, security, and you should find encrypt phone. Now, of course, this probably depends, you know, this is probably different uh, if you're running an overlay, you probably find it in a different place or whatever. I'm not sure what version they included encryption into the OS, um, but a, a lot of other people wrote in to say that there's a manual way of doing this. It's not as instantaneous as what Allison is talking about, because unless you set your phone to be, to encrypt the content, you know, when you, you know, first set it up, um, it's going to take an hour to, you know, encrypt all of your content after the fact. But what you can do when you're getting ready to sell your phone or whatever is you can before the the last step before you factory reset it is go in here and encrypt your phone. Yeah. Basically, that's going to take all of your contents, put it into an encrypted library, and then when you factory reset, it's killing that key. Right. And uh, basically, you're doing something very similar to this. That is so, clever. So there you go. It's not as foolproof as it probably should be right, right. Uh, and on ios from what i understand it, uh device encryption is default you can turn it off you can choose not to encrypt your device but i think it comes as a uh, default uh as a standard kind of default option to encrypt your device so you know it makes it a little easier but after last week after last week's show i went online i bought one of those big magnets that you those powered magnets that you plug in and you turn on it goes <laughs> and when i'm done with my phone i'm just going to put it on that and rub it and get all that data <laughs> off of there and then sell it on eBay. there we yeah, go yeah. Yeah. uh johnny b in the chat room points out android added encryption in honeycomb so there we go little uh, little factoid yeah. for you this is like an onion that just we keep peeling back yep as, as we prove we don't know everything that's right but i never and, claimed uh, to so that's okay <laughs> All right. But All right. Let's thank a sponsor. In fact, let's thank Smart Things. Vanna, if you would I show would off the, the stuff. 
the goods. swag. Smart things uh, is pretty cool stuff. It's a uh, home automation that you can get started with right now. It uh, makes makes it easy to protect and control your home with your smartphone. You can adjust the lights. Uh, adjust the temperature, keep track of whether your kids come home from school on time. You can check to see if you remember to close the garage door. You can do it all from anywhere using your iOS or Android device. You start with one of the three smart home security kits. Each kit contains one smart things hub and enough sensors and outlets to turn your home into a smart home in as little as 15 minutes. You just plug the smart things hub into your router Add the sensors and outlets by following the instructions from the free, uh, easy-to-use SmartThings app, so it walks you through it. In addition to SmartThings' own sensors, you can add hundreds of other home automation devices from a variety of manufacturers, GE, Schlag, Honeywell, or Eon, as well as, of course, the latest connected devices like the Nest thermostat, Philips Hue, Wemo, Sonos, and more. SmartThings also lets developers create new ways to use the product and then publishes these integrations and features in its app so that all of its customers can use them. With thousands of developers adding new integrations all the time, you can update your smart home as often as you want to fit your preferences. It's kind of like Tasker, right? It's like so cool. it's like it's Tasker like, it's, for it's, your home. It's Tasker it's IRL. Awesome. That's I want cool. it so bad. I'm already on their website. Yeah, it's with cool one in stuff. The and and so the, cool. the hardware is really well designed. It's a really cool stuff. Uh, they offer three, SmartThings offers three home security kits, which they call Smart, Smarter, and Smartest. So you've got three options. The Smart Home Security Kit is $329. It includes one SmartThings hub, one smart sense motion sensor, one smart sense presence sensor, and three smart sense multi sensors, which are basically multi purpose sensors for doors, windows, drawers. Those uh, are the coolest ones. Yeah, they sense when things open and close. And you can also measure temperature, acceleration, vibration, just a, a lot of sensors in there. Uh, the Smarter Home Security Kit is $479. It adds an additional motion sensor, a smart power outlet, and a siren strobe alarm for your uh, at-home raves. And the smartest, <laughs> <laughs> or burglar, you know, wh however yeah. you want to use these things. Or both. Uh, both, exactly. The smartest home security kit is $599. It includes all of the above, plus another presence sensor, power outlet, and an outdoor light plug-in control power outlet. Each of these kits offers an affordable way uh, to secure and automate your home without any of the, of the contracts, the monitoring fees, or the hidden charges associated. I genuinely think I'm going to buy it. Oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm not just, I'm not just saying home. that. <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd known about this because, you know, they, they always try and get you with these new uh, contracts. It's like $50 a month to uh -huh. monitor a, an alarm that doesn't even function right. And this is, uh, I've been thinking like, where's the internet of things yes. when you need it? Uh, to get started creating your smart home, visit smartthings.com slash twit. Do that, Joe. Don't forget the slash twit. Uh, you can save 10% off the oh, purchase so of cool. any home security kit by entering the code TWIT10 at checkout. You'll also get free shipping within the U.S. That's smartthings.com slash twit. And remember to use the code TWIT10 at checkout. Make your home smarter. Um, that's so cool. There you go. I agree. And the platform idea is awesome, too. I mean, yeah, you that's have Philips Hue, and I don't know if they support drop cam, uh, drop cam, maybe not, but, you know, the, the Philips Hue thing is awesome because you can just automate all your lighting and the idea of tying it all together. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to check that out. No, every, t every time I talk to Gina, Gina, she raves about her smart thing stuff. So, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, she got in on the Kickstarter She got in on the ground floor. The thing. The thing, yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. Thank you, smart awesome. things. Okay. Are we ready to battle? That's what you've been waiting a little, for. A little bit of arena time? A little bit. All right, let's do it. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. It's safe to say that I'm on a, I'm on a roll. You jerk. I, I don't know how this happened. It's curious amazing. To, curious to see if you can uh, if you can keep it going. But you did pick VLC, dude. Well, I also insulted Gina, which we, we all know does. I was I was honestly afraid. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. And you know what? As you said on last week's episode, you guys had to shoulder a lot. Yeah. So a, a gimme app. Okay. And, and let's last be honest. Week. This is this is not like this is my hell month. It's not like I haven't slept for days. <laughs> <laughs> so VLC. Uh, Unsurprisingly, uh, wins with forty-seven percent, almost half of the votes for VLC. It's uh, hard. Yeah, I, 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 it was. I even said on the show, I'm like, I don't normally do this, but you know. So. Uh, baby time, Android Wear lock, thirty-six percent. I have it installed, yep. uh, and it actually comes in really handy. And then EDJing, D 
DJ Music Mixer Studio. That was Father Roberts. Yeah, it was. Uh, proved that he was not a mix master oh. necessarily as much as he wanted to be. Yeah. I thought it was a cool looking it's app. It's a cool app. No, I mean, I, and the point I made last week was that I'd done cross DJ yeah. about a month ago. And remember how many years I've been waiting for DJ apps? Hey, and now, now, two, now, yeah. now we've got a few. Yeah, exactly. So cool. Excellent. Uh, but All right. Yeah, no, but I've got a four week in a row win streak, and I believe I have 10 wins under my belt. It's time to take you down, Ron. All right. I hope that I can. I hope that I can follow through on that but promise. But Gina did bring up an interesting thing, and as we're as we're expanding to the watch and stuff like that, the the the, the apps are getting more specific and more, you know, and like I've got a very specific use case with my app, and you know, so it's yep. gonna be, yeah. So all right, anyway, I don't have a specific use case with my app except fun, maybe. <laughs> uh, it's called Black. And this is, uh, this is definitely one of those apps that I saw out for iOS uh, a few months ago, and I've been waiting for it because it's just a lot of fun. The concept is very simple. The demo is, is, tells you everything you need to know, right? It shows a little hand swiping. So you do it. It creates a line. And I'm going to miss it. Oh, okay, no, I didn't. All right, and I got the ball. All right, so that's it, right? Um, basically, of course, the demo uh, is, is pretty easy from the start, right? Basically, essentially, you with your finger have to draw a line that eliminates the bubbles that appear on the screen. So, uh, nope, I'm not going to make that. It's angled off. Uh, no, nope, I'm not going to make that. Ugh. No, that's totally okay. If I can't pass level two, I'm, I'm really pathetic. There we go. <laughs> well, you're at an angle and also I your am. vision is impaired. Uh, it's true. <laughs> I'm only seeing through one and a half eyes right now. Obviously, it's one of those you know games that kind of ramps up, right? Um, as you get along, things get more difficult. Right now, all you're seeing are these colored dots that that get in that that are there. I believe the black you can't hit. So in this level, for example, I have to I have to figure out how I uh, I'm doing it at an angle, so it's really hard. Okay, that was that was more along the lines. Uh, okay, see, it's really hard. No, I want to. Uh, uh, Okay, anyways, uh, it gets way more complicated than this, though. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, I feel stupid that I can't get past this level, but there end up being, like, grids of obstacles that fill the entire screen. You have to figure out how you get past all those obstacles and get the colored balls. Dang it! Seriously! <laughs> ah! Okay, this is just pathetic. All right, uh, for me to say that it's really difficult... Uh, is true, although it shouldn't be this difficult this early in the game, but it is, and I will say it's it's incredibly addicting. It basically like follows the trace of your hands. Oh, that was creative. Uh, I should remember to do that. So here's what I'm talking about, right? You have to make sure that you get around all the other obstacles, and oh, man. They must have created this game because I never would have thought to do that. Um, anyways, it's a lot of fun. It's really easy to just kind of pick it up and play. It's two dollars ninety nine cents, and it's kind of mesmerizing as you kind of like draw your finger on the screen and watch the line go. Um, it's just I don't know. It's a lot of fun and kind of complicated, obviously, because I can't I can't pass the levels. Sorry, sorry, I suck at this game. Okay, Black <laughs> two ninety nine. Uh, a lot of fun. There I feel like go. the name sums up how you feel about, about your I skills. I don't feel Black. about my skills, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not about the game. Not about the, the game, about your skills. I yeah. the, the truth is, on the phone, I've gotten much further, uh, and I installed it on the tablet for the bigger screen for the show, and apparently I shouldn't have done that because <laughs> I suck. <laughs> so there we go, Black. All right, so Joe, I do have your app installed. Uh, so you know, if you want to talk I, about I've, it, I'll I've show it caveat this. I just I, I had a panic that I'd maybe said this app before, but I don't think I did just looking at my email because it's always the hardest challenge ever is coming on this show and trying to think of an app that no one has ever said before <laughs> Truth. on the Android ecosystem that yes. is also awesome. Yes. Um, that all said, I really like this app. This is Yplan. It's uh, another British uh, company, so obviously I'm totally biased. And they um, basically curate um, awesome events that are happening in the area that you're in. Right now, I think they support London, New York, and San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, well, it's a bit like kind of Groupon meets Uber for I want to go out right now and do something awesome with a deal. Um, and they have a really cool different uh, set of curation for things like wine tasting, club nights, sports events, uh, live music. And so I just love it because uh, I'm someone who doesn't really plan uh, very well for uh, my uh, sort of social life. And you can just fire up the app and 
it's a really, really nice UI, uh, lots of big pictures and uh, good iconography and, and you, know, you can see what's close to you and so on. And then you can just go in there and pay for it. And usually there's a little perk for using the app. So they negotiate VIP. I went to the Giants opening game using Yplan uh, for a fraction of what it should have cost at the last minute. And nice. uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. So a good, useful app if you like to go out and you don't like to plan. Awesome. It is Y plan. It's free. And uh, yeah. Oh, we'll Vegas be... now as well. Cool. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. There you Let's go. Fire that oh. up next CES. <laughs> okay. And you got a little map so you can kind of see where in the city it all is and everything. Excellent. And yeah. Later. There we go. Anything in Petaluma? Let's see. Uh, no. There's not a lot <laughs> going on in Petaluma. Something in Napa. Oh. So you could always head over there. Here. Uh, that would be Rich Robinson of the Black Crows. Uh, oh. For those of you keeping track, uh, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so that is why <laughs> plan. Uh, it's excellent design, and uh, I like the simplicity of it. Hopefully, they open it up to even more locations because it's a really cool idea. Yeah, that's the plan. It's a bit like Uber. So, once yeah. you know, they need a team on the ground to, to, to figure out what's good, and then uh, once they have the opportunity to, to scale it, I think it's going to be uh, pretty awesome pretty. For, for big cities, especially. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Beck, the national. Oh, hey, where's only two hundred eighty nine dollars <laughs> and fifty cents. Only VIP access. The most important part about that one. Oh, <laughs> two day VIP access. Monterey County Fair and Events Center. Jeez. Uh, but I would love to see Beck in the national. All right, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm all a, judgy. I can't. I'm, I, I'm a loser, baby. I can't think of. Oh man. What? So what? Uh, yeah. Snooze. What? Snooze. Yeah, snooze. The national. It's beardy music. Beardy music, I love it. <laughs> yeah, but they've got good songs. Yeah, they've got yeah, like, that put you to sleep. Apparently, I don't know. Anyway, well, speaking of songs, you got to have um, your your you, '90s flashback well, band. <laughs> the reunited. They got all mad. That person on Google Plus got all angry at me. Did you see that? No. So, so uh, one of my favorite bands of all times at all. This uh, actually, it's funny because uh, beat you know Beats music. Remember that app? Uh -huh. um, so a friend of mine loves it. Like swears by it. And he knows that I listen to a lot of late 90s, like emo, yeah. post-hardcore stuff. And I, you know how they, they've got a bunch of curated playlists. And they had a playlist that was um, in an alternate universe. All these songs were radio hits. Uh -huh. And it was all late 90s emo underground bands that I, a lot of them I was friends with and hung out with. whatever. But it was like all like it was everything I listened to. Uh -huh. It was kind of neat to see Beats kind of doing that curated kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's it was cool. Neat. But no, but so one of my favorite bands of all time is a band called Braid. Um, they got they got back together years ago. They played a couple of reunion shows and they played shows here and there. And they've been slowly been recording new songs. And then and like two of the guys in the band have kids. Like they've all moved on. They're much fatter now. Um, no beards. But, no I'm, beards. Okay. Uh, no beards. Um, but they came out with a new record called No Coast. And the record's great. And I was all excited for it. So I went to Google Plus and I was just like, Hey, when, yeah, here it is. I said, Very excited for the new Braid album, No Coast, one of my all time favorite bands from the '90s. Back at it. And Matthew Bowen was. I know nothing of this band, but. In general back at it doesn't necessarily mean good as before oh, <laughs> oh, thanks <laughs> yes it's good as before it's, it's even better, better it's better yeah. than not anything else yeah. ever again exactly so yeah. anyway yes. I well hear i hear you Based on that, you could tell that I like music. I, I listen to. I'm very snobby about my music picks. But if you remember, let's 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 turn back the clock uh, several years to to uh, to um, Google I/O when a little thing called the Nexus Q came out. Oh yeah, I remember that. That I still have sitting on my shelf, and I don't know little, what to do with it. It was a little and ball thing. The little yeah. the little home entertainment thing. But one of the aspects of it that was interesting was this idea of being able to control the music that was being played from your phone. So the Nexus Q was, was you were streaming music to the Nexus Q. And if you were in a party environment, people could take over nah, and you could do all stuff mode, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And That's then cool. Nexus Q fell flat on its face, like flat on its face. And nobody's really picked up that with, baton. With great paperweight glory. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. The heaviest it even, music device ever. The, it's good the, for shot putting. The actually. Nexus Q <laughs> even had a flat face. It That's did. That's yeah. what yeah. sat on the <laughs> table. <laughs> so, um, so it was interesting. This caught my eye when uh, this new app that is compatible with Chromecast, going on to this, my, my theme for this week, uh, QCast came out with a very familiar logo. And basically, what it is, it's a way to utilize Chromecast to cast music to the Chromecast utilizing your Google Play All Access account to set up a playlist and stream music, but then also in a party environment, you can have a thing where people can say, I don't like this song, and vote it down and then put on their own music. 
So uh, pretty cool. We're going to try it. So bear with us. Did you turn the volume up on the TV? Oh, so, yeah, that's uh, the other, you know. So what I've got here is now this is a fresh install of the app. So I want to show everybody exactly how it works. It says, welcome to QCast, the party playlist for Chromecast. It says, select Chromecast from the list below to host or connect to any party. If you want to host a party, you'll need to sign into your Google account after connecting. So I'm going to say, got it. So I'm going to connect to the Chromecast here. All right. I'm going to try it searching right now for me. All right. So here we go. So I've connected. So if you see the TV, <gasps> right? So we got in there. All right. So back to my screen. It says, party host needed. This party doesn't have a host yet. Would you like to be the host? You'll need your Google. I have an all access Google Play subscription. So I'm going to say yes. So it just goes in and asks me to sign in with my account. See that? There you go. All right, so now I am in control. As host, you can swipe songs out of the queue to remove them and control the volume with your device's volume rocker. So I'm going to say, okay. So now all you got to do is you hit search, and let, let's find Braid. Let's, we were talking about Braid, so let's listen to some Braid. There's the new album, Braid No Coast. All right, I'm going to try to find my favorite song on it. I can't remember. It was East End Hollow. So I'm going to add that to the queue. All right. And then sure enough, there it is. There's oh right we got the little TV. Oh. oh well it's coming out here. Yes. Yeah, that works. So now I can I can lower this with my I can make it louder or not. Doesn't seem to be working. But ah, QCast crashed. <laughs> Could it be that I launched also? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Well. <laughs> okay, so now I can go in. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, welcome to the party. Oh, that's cool. I like it. Okay, so now I have to go to play music, or I can do the search. You can just here. search and throw something in. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead. I'm adding songs to the queue. See, I just added the next song. It shows up there on the right. Brian, show the screen. Okay, I just added Allison uh, by See? Slow now look, Dive. Now look there. Hey, that's cool. Isn't that cool? So it's, oh, this is great. Right? You jerk. I hate you. <laughs> so now, but what I want to see you do is thumb down the song. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so show, I'm going to thumb it down. All right. And I thumbed it down too, and it's uh, killed the song. Huh? So if you can, so if you can get enough people at a party to thumb down a song, if the majority of the people do it, it will it'll go to the next song. Oh. All right. That's great. Isn't that cool? That's very, very cool. I like it a lot. So, there's a new Morrissey for you, though? Released today, right? Uh, yeah, it came out today, yeah. Uh, well, awesome. That's, so, that's very cool. This, I like it. This is a nice little fun live demo. We haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so now, um, so now and I, as the party controller, I can skip, so I can, go to, I can go to Allison. And I queued up Echo and the Bunnymen for Dr. Morbius. Oh, um, yeah, it's a good song. Can't wait to see yeah. these guys. November. I know tickets go on sale this week, right? Yep, yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Um, so what's interesting is that, you know, it requires Chromecast. It also requires the Google All Access subscription. At least one person have the Google All Access subscription. Um, but if you have those it's a, and you have a lot of people over and, like, I, I've, you know, a lot of my friends have, you know, we have music going, Sonos or things like that. If you're if you're an Android leaning user, this is a fun little app to utilize and gives. If you don't mind letting people vote on the music and uh, having fun with the playlists, uh, you could do that. So I went ahead and added oh. some beard rock. Well, uh, I'm not gonna thumb down Echo the Bunny Man. Lucky this is a long song. So. I just thumbed it down. <laughs> oh, but I'm not a majority. So, but I, I mean, that's a great. The Chromecast uh, interface is great. You got the timer there with the song. It shows a progress bar. It's got the queue. You know, I love so the queue. The queue awesome is really cool, isn't it? Everybody can kind of look yeah. at it and go. So you'd be like, oh, I want to get to that. Yeah. So That's really cool, man. Yeah. Now I just need to get friends so we can have a party. I need friends for yeah. a party. Well, yeah, me too. I, I need to actually have parties. and Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I just added some Gorilla Biscuits on there so we can get, get to get the hardcore. But, yeah. So awesome! So there you go. Q Qcast. It's totally free in the Android uh, in the Google Play Store. Um, so if you got Chromecast, just there's, a, there's another one too called Qcast in the Google Play Store. It's like a uh, uh, a quiz game for, for your uh, friends. Oh, okay. So this yeah, is called. I think this is, so do a search for Qcast music. Yeah, this is technically oh, Qcast music. Yeah, yeah. And that'll that'll get it for you. Yep. So uh, very cool. Yeah. Too bad that that this isn't like baked in automatically with play, you know what I mean? Because then too bad, right? And it was on Nexus Q, right? But who mm. had the Q? 
Right. Yeah. Right. See, that needs to. Yeah. I bet. I bet they do that someday. I, I, and until yeah. then, QCast yeah. will save the day. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's totally free, and cool. it's a lot of fun to play with. So love there it. You go. That's awesome. I love the the visual kind of approach. See, that's why I like I like the Chromecast. It changes the thing. Oh, it's it's very cool. yeah, it's very, very cool. cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, it's time for you to tell us if you think it's very cool or not. We said cool like a million times. Uh, what do you think? Uh, go to aaapoll.com slash one seven zero for episode one seventy. aaapoll.com aaaapoll.com slash one seven zero. And which do you think is cool? Man, yeah, it's wow. not a competition. This is <laughs> early. This is early. You never know. Mine always gets no votes because I always go for the edgy British app. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that I've noticed that localized apps are in hard. the arena are really hard. I did that GoGoBot travel one that, that fell flat. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they can have a great design yep. and a great yep. service and cool approach. But if anyone watches the show and says, that's cool, can I do it? No, I can't. Then yep. they don't vote yep. for it. Out. Uh, although it's well, very cool, cool. I'll, I'll, just, I'll go and have a good night tonight while you guys yeah stream. Music we'll sit together. around. We'll sit around this TV. Yeah, <laughs> thumbing down true. each other's music. No, I don't want you to listen to the song that makes you happy. <laughs> well, we no. really we should have brought uh, Brian in on it so that That's we a had a third point. person. Yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. If only we had thought of that. Well, after yeah, the show, after next the show. time, yeah, next, next time. time. Uh, well, that is. That's it. That's it. We did it. We you did it. We did it, brother. You survived. These these uh, eyes, they these made eyes. it somehow. These, these eyes. eyes. <laughs> uh, that is it. Great episode. And uh, always great to have you on, Joe. Really appreciate you coming yeah, on. Thank you very much. Always good to see you. Uh, where nice. isn't it amazing how everyone's left in the office? While I know, I know. I watched. I was watching people like get like like <laughs> they're checking their phones, got their bags, and they're, they're like, "Oh, I can't wait to get to my evening." And you're <laughs> doing all that, Android. <laughs> like, I'm awesome. here. It's cool. Uh, so it's time for you to go get a drink. But before you do, uh, tell people just kind of anything that you want them to know, where they can find you, any anything you want to tease, whatever. It's up to you. Um, well, www.swiftkey.com. We finally bought the .com. Oh, oh congrats. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, no, Mirror. There we go. Yeah. yeah. But oh, Net still works also. That's what um, we've yeah, had up the whole quick. episode. <laughs> okay, all right. So dot com is where they need to go. Whoops. Yeah, no, it's just one of those things where there was like a, I think it was like a small factory in Arkansas yeah. made a, a plastic clip for keys, and we finally convinced them to let us have the domain. But wow, um, that's a big win right there. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, keep your eyes peeled in the SwiftKey store because coming next week there's some exciting treats. That's all I'll say. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Lollipops, maybe. Maybe. Treats. Yeah, so I'm, I'm to, trying to read uh, between Swiftkey. the lines. Swiftkey.com, get Swiftkey if you don't already have it. I noticed neither of you guys were using it just now. I'm, I'm bummed. But, yeah. um, what? The only, reason <laughs> I, the only reason I'm not is because I'm on L and I'm trying to soak it all in. I'm um, all about it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's really it's a, it's a cool new uh, look with the keyboard that Google have done. But, yeah, go there. Uh, hit Get it now. Go get some new themes and then just... Take a look next week, see what happens. Although that that it, this is interesting. Anytime you ever look at an Android phone, you're waiting for someone to pull up the keyboard to type something so that you oh, can yeah. tell. Oh, yeah. You're like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. They are or they aren't. Oh, are they you're judging fire? me every time you see me typing <laughs> without Swift Key. But the worst is I, I sit on buses and trains and I like really creepily and sort of like look. <laughs> <laughs> and that's funny. Are like, what are you doing? Like, not my data. You're like, I don't care about your data. What's your keyboard? Well, Come that's, on. that's yeah. funny because you look to see what keyboard they're using. Well, I do the same thing on Muni and Bart, but I like to read the text messages. <laughs> so <laughs> You're that guy. It's always oh, fascinating. You're that well, it's, guy. A ca it's a casual glance. It's a casual. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, well, so swiftkey.com. Check it out next week. Sounds like uh, some big news coming then. So thank you again, Joe. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Uh, what about you, Ron? Well, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Comic-Con is approaching, and that's why I look so tired, because by day I'm over at imagecomics.com working on the wonderful world of comic books and putting out some great stuff, uh, and we're excited for San Diego Comic-Con next week. And so there's going to be a whole bunch of news coming out of Image, so if you like comic books, check all that out next week. But uh, personally, if you dig me, you can go over to my about.me slash ronxo page where you can find links to my Google Plus and my Twitter and my Instagram and all that fun stuff, uh, and ronxo.thinkup.com if you want to see my greatest hits uh, via Gina's uh, wonderful, wonderful new product, so, which is now available for free sign-up. For, uh, for, yeah. yeah. For open free trial? Free trial, yeah. Yeah, it's it. awesome. Love so, it. There you go. 
Brian, newlywed <gasps> Brian. Did, uh, thanks, did you sir. take her last name or did she take yours or are you both uh, your own last names? Uh, we took all the words and we just scrambled them together. Oh, okay. So. But uh, she works. did take the hippo uh, Twitter name, so. Oh, okay. So that confused. was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, congratulations, by the oh, way. Uh, super awesome news. Thanks, man. Uh, what what you got going on? Um, well, I co-host a show called Know How on Thursdays with Padre, and that's always a lot of fun. Uh, great to have you back, by the way, before Thanks. I forget. I missed you there for a while. <laughs> and uh, also, Joe, I've been a faithful uh, Swift Key user for a while. Love it, so. I don't know what those guys are using, but that's well, what I have on my you're phone. You're the best. They've been saying they're fans all day, and that's awesome, but you're, yeah. you're clearly the best. <laughs> it's hard to tell because yeah. the camera's you not jerk. focused, but... No, yeah. wait, that's... Right. No, I'm kidding. <gasps> no, I would... <laughs> Oops. I do that. That's the best when someone says, look, I love your keyboard, ah. and they show you the wrong one. That's it's, it's like the uh, modern awkward. equivalent of, no, that wasn't me in that movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved you in that movie. That wasn't me. <laughs> but yeah, that's I was all in for the me. Other movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about awesome. you, Jason? What have you been up to other than being uh, incapacitated? That <laughs> there was that. Um, really, really actually, good books lately, or <laughs> I've been listening to some on Audible. I have yeah. a, a queue that I'm bouncing between. But while I was out, uh, a project that I been working with some friends on uh, got released, and I have yet to do a blog post about it. Oh so man, I missed it. If you go to Mofos. That's M O F O S. Yeah, classy. Dot bandcamp dot com. You will find the Mofos tribute to the Misfits. So we did. Basically, we took awesome. the best of the Misfits album, which is just a classic compilation of Misfits songs, yep. and we did our own versions of all of them. So it's totally free. We just had a lot of fun with it, and uh, you know, I've been making music with these guys for twenty. years Did you years do where now. Eagles there? Uh, yeah. That's oh, on there. play that one, Heck Brian. Yeah. Play it. That's my favorite Misfit song. Heck yeah, we did that. If you like punk rock, you'll probably like you it. What are you playing? Uh, I did mainly vocals on oh, really? like five or six songs. So wait, let's hear, let's hear Jason doing Danzig. Uh, well, I didn't do Danzig. We didn't imitate. We did our own uh, versions of them. <laughs> Although some of them sound pretty fa faithful Misfits, but. Uh, this this isn't me singing, but it's a great song nonetheless. Anyways, if you like punk rock and you like the Misfits, even if you don't like the Misfits, it's still pretty awesome. We had a lot of fun with it. Oh, we had a mute, 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 mute. Yeah, it gets gets it gets not your eyes not safe your for uh, for podcast real quick right there. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, mofos.bandcamp.com Alright, that's it for this week Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of All Band Android and it's been our pleasure to bring you Android stuff to talk about uh, we, You can leave us a voicemail Leave us a voicemail at 347-SHOW-AAA You can always send us an email It's AAA at twit.tv uh, find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. We're also on Google Plus. Just search for All About Android there. You'll find a community. You'll find an account. Uh, we have a subreddit, twitaaa.reddit.com, that helps us create this show. Uh, so we appreciate your help there. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa, as well as past episodes on YouTube and iTunes. And finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. <laughs>